I was in Europe for three weeks doing bowls, and I traveled with three different Dutch analyzers. The uh, most senior of them was Jan Stilder, who's been an analyzer for 26 years. He does a lot of presentations, so he has slides that fit that. And he showed me some of them. And they're, the, the Dutch are very analytical, very practical. They know how to make a dollar, and they don't monkey around with things that don't make a dollar. Form and function is the basis of everything we preach and everything that was in his slides. He has added a term, responsibility. The ultimate responsibility is in your barn. If you have cows that can't get up and down, that get their legs stuck every day, that uh, are so masculine that they chase the kids, all those things are, are detrimental to you getting your work done in a day and making profit by the end of the month. Anytime we, we change, um, don't change the makeup of our cattle, it can hurt us. If we change it for an incorrect reason, we chase something that gets away from function. If we lose the sight of function, our form will change. The first slide that Jan showed me was two dogs, two pictures put on one slide. One was a bulldog. The bulldog cannot breathe. We have bred him with a short face, and the body is half head. They artificially inseminate them, I understand, because they can't breed anymore. Every puppy is born by C-section because the female dog can't push that head out. The puppies have to be hand-raised, and you can't let them near a water dish because they can't get their head back out. <laughs> puppies are $400 because it's such a nuisance to raise them. <laughs> I mentioned that to one of my clients, and he said, yeah, I have some friends that raise $400 bulldog puppies, but half the time they just go up behind the, the wood pile because they don't survive. Uh, okay, this is so far from form that it no longer functions. We have artificially placed a form that does not function. The other picture is a long-haired chihuahua, just a picture of the, the, the head from the front, with the tongue hanging out. The muzzle is so narrow, it can't fit the tongue inside its mouth. <laughs> he shows two German shepherds. One was the European champion from 1961, with the front legs here and the back legs here. Nice straight top dog, functions forever. The second picture was the current European champion, with the front legs here and the back legs down here. The legs weren't shorter, they were kicked out behind to give the dog an uphill masculine appearance and look like he's pulling forward on his leash. That dog is young and he's already had two hip surgeries. Do we want dairy cows like that? Dale was in the uh, Dairy Star magazine two weeks ago and he said we had to quit showing cows. We don't have the modern kind. They're too wide. <coughs> what? How can cows be too wide? But go to Madison yourself and look at what's out there. If we look at the true type Holstein cow from right now, she doesn't look like a cow that could win in the show ring until she's an old cow. She's too wide. What's going on? If we take a calf to the fair, we have to take her away from the other calves and starve her. She has to look like she's milking 100 pounds right now. That's not reality. If we took the true type cow that we have, she's five years old, and took a three-dimensional video of her as a five-year-old, four-year-old, three-year-old, two-year-old, yearling, and calf, and then rolled that paper up and hit our judges over the head with them and said, do this, they might get it. But I've seen no change in the show ring in a long time except more shenanigans. I haven't seen them value width. 
nor in the linear appraisal of a cow is width measured anywhere except the rear udder. You can have a totally narrow cow front to back, but if the pins are open, it will appear with the parallel rear udder lines that it's wide, but it's still on a narrow body. I said at last year's meeting, you don't have to believe everything I say any more than uh, that farmer gave up on AA because he didn't believe that analysis, that a balanced cow, can change the temperament of your whole herd. And you don't have to believe the fellow that says it's voodoo. Find someone that uses it and go look at his cows and watch his performance. We've quit letting farmers make observations and acting on them. We're told that genomics trumps all of what you see in your own barn. Okay, you can believe that if you want to. But just like Dale said, it's much easier to get up in the morning at 20 below when you aren't going to go in the barn every morning and find another cow tangled up, or a case of mastitis, or a cow that should have been able to have a calf that can't. You will also find among your analysis neighbors the cabinets on two-year-olds became less of an issue. If that farmer could get through a two-year heifer drought without buying cattle, better calf survivability, better calf uh, uh, survivability through birth and through growing up and through having their own first calf. There's a fellow who has been called the king of genomics by Holstein International Magazine. And his statement is, we need to put calving as the most important issue in our index. Because that's the biggest uh, problem of our cows, is they can't get calves out. My goodness, uh, that's pretty sad when we reach the time that a cow is performing like a bulldog, that they can't have their own calves. I have a farmer in Iowa that told me many years ago, I like it now that I'm making a cow that can have any calf, that I don't have to create every calf that any cow can have. Change your cow and get away from that need for a three or a four or five. There's always going to be some 14s. I think there's a lot can be done uh, as far as feeding your dry cows that's going to have just as big an impact as picking a cavity in sight. Um, there's always different answers for everything. If you have a problem with every cow, look at nutrition. But balancing a cow is still always going to be your, your best bet to breeding a cow. 